All right. This is uh, Dubai residential price index. The graph you see here is the chart of average prices per square foot. 2007-2008, so we reached to the high, that, that, those were the crazy days. 2007-2008 was the time you buy a property in the launch, in the morning the price is different with the noon and noon price is different with the afternoon. Because when a, proper, when, when a, when a developer starts releasing units in a launch, 9 o'clock they release, let's say, a batch of 100 units at a price, then once, when they reach to almost finishing that batch, before releasing the next batch, they increase the price by 3% or 5%, and then by 12 o'clock, they release the next batch again. So they used to increase the prices, right? So when your token is called around 2 o'clock in the afternoon, your price is already higher than the, by 20% higher than the price of a person, sometimes, yeah. 15, 20% higher than the price of another gentleman who was in the same queue with you from Tuesday until Saturday to buy that property. So it made sense for many of those guys to buy in the secondary market from these guys who bought in the early times between 9 to 10 or 9 to 11 with a 5% or 10% premium. So what happens to this guy who bought at 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning is that let's say he paid a check, he gave a check of 5%, Okay, which is going to go to the accounts the day after and hit the bank the day after tomorrow, right? But today, he is getting 5% premium for, let's say you have given a check of 200,000 dirhams, today you get 400,000 dirhams and after two days, 200,000 will be deducted from your account. That is why people were waiting in the queue from Tuesday from Wednesday. Until 2008. So in July 2008, Financial crisis came to the USA. People were talking about financial crisis. It's coming to Dubai, and, we, and nobody was uh, expecting this to come, to come to Dubai because prices were increasing day by day. So, but I'll tell you my personal observation, my personal experience. What we saw in 2008, in summer 2008, was that the properties that we used to sell like this were not getting buyers. They were not easy to sell anymore. Like the villas in the springs, villas in meadows, or apartments in the six towers in Dubai Marina, or apartments in Burj residences, which were always very easy to sell at high prices. And the closing prices were always higher than the asking prices, which is the case these days in villas, no? Closing prices are higher than the initial asking price. They were not easy to sell. So this is what we felt. And everyone was saying, okay, this is summer. Then uh, after summer, we will have the cityscape. After summer, we had Ramadan. After Ramadan, we have cityscape. After cityscape, during cityscape, everything will be good. Everything will be back to normal. But during cityscape, everyone saw that again, there were no buyers. And there were a lot of supply in the market. We were facing a huge oversupply. That is how Khalil, Prices started to drop so fast that in many areas, many properties lost 67 to 70% of their value. Palm Jumeirah garden home from 25 million reached to how much? 5 million? Five to six. So in many areas, many properties lost 70% of their value. Uh, I remember I bought a one bedroom in Tanaro in the Greens for 1.7 million and I was happy that I managed to get it and next year it was sold for 850,000. Just in a matter of six, seven months. Uh, so this was due to the global financial crisis or recession. Then later, in 2012-13, we faced the world faced Arabian Spring, revolution in many Arabic countries. Tunisia, Lebanon, crisis in Syria, sorry, Libya, <laughs> not Lebanon. <laughs> Lebanon has been there for the past 60 years, 30 years, <laughs> 30 years at least. Now, in uh, Tunisia, we had crisis in Libya, in Syria, in Iraq. So 
all the investors in these countries, they wanted to take their money to somewhere safe. Because politically and socially, their country was not safe. And money wants to be in somewhere safe. So the best place for all these guys was Dubai. Why? Safe, secure, close to home, halal food, masjid everywhere, mosque everywhere, similar culture, similar language, high standards of living, everything is new, everything is luxury, blah, blah, blah. So that was the best place, that was the best destination for all these Arabic countries to move their investments to. Okay? So the real estate in Dubai started getting more attention because of the crisis in these countries. By the same time, a booster was added to this process. And the booster was? Expo. Expo. Announcing Expo. It was announced that Expo 2020, which is a six-month uh, show or exhibition, is coming to Dubai. And the previous one was in? Italy. Milan. In which year? Milan. 2015. So, so after the announcement of Expo, of course, everyone, government, media, they did a lot of exposure about it. Many investors came. Many buyers came. Prices started to go up and up and up until, when is this peak? 2014. September 14. Okay, end of 2014. By the end of 2014, there have been so many investors and developers, private developers and government developers, that launched so many projects, especially apartments, that the market faced oversupply, especially in the apartment section. Right? The market faced oversupply, especially in the apartments, because among these investors who came to invest, who came to buy, many of them bought lands and launched buildings. And the government developers did the same. Private developers did the same. They launched so many buildings. Look at the projects that were launched before 2015. And they were all scheduled to be completed before the expo. Because that's what everyone was planning. Everyone was saying, okay, I buy an apartment. Before expo, I get a lot of attention. I get a lot of buyers and I will... I will sell my property before the expo, before 25 million, 30 million people come to visit the country. The plan looks okay, but the problem is everyone had the same plan, right? So uh, look at the projects that were launched before 2015. Towers with 400 units, 300 units, two towers with 800 units, 1,000 units, Huge master developments, Dubai Creek Harbor, Dubai Hills Estate, many new projects in downtown, many new projects in Arjan, many new projects in JVC, Dubai land, lot of projects were launched. So here we face the oversupply and because of the oversupply, prices started going down, 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 down. So you said the major reason was oversupply? Oversupply was the major. Oversupply was the major reason. Sometimes reduction, uh, see, <clears throat> One concern about real estate has always been price of oil. So if you look at the history of these prices, always increasing the price of oil increases the price of properties in Dubai because of two reasons. Number one, when the oil price increases, your cost of construction increases. Right? Oil price increases the cost of construction. Secondly, when the oil price increases, it means a country that has the six reserves and resources of the oil in the world will make more money. So when your government, when your country makes more money, it means you will do better in economy, you will do more business and people will make more money. So that's why your market will get, will get more attention and the prices will go up. It's always about demand and supply, right? However, as I said, only 5% of the economy as the, of this country is depending on oil right now. And 95% is? Trade, tourism, trade, trade, businesses, and other stuff. But still, price of oil still has a little bit of psychological or mental, ment mentally, mental impact on the market. Okay? Mm -hmm. Mental impact on the market. <laughs>
So for, so for five years, from 2015 till 2020, prices were going down. And of course, in 2019, we had the COVID. Till 2019. Let's look at end of 2014, September 2014, till beginning of 2019. Prices were going down majorly because of Supplies. oversupply. Announcement of VAT helped the prices to go down further. Again, it was another, because people were not used to paying any form of taxes in Dubai. Now that they want to pay 5% VAT, it affected many businesses, actually. In the beginning, there is the challenge, right? But in long run, it definitely helps the country. Because in long run, when you have VAT, when you have corporate tax, means the government is... Thank you. The government will get additional revenue, which will be used for the further development of the country. So at the end, everybody will make more money. You are paying 5% VAT, but in long run, you will make more money also. So in the beginning, it, has a, it had a lot of impact, especially in businesses like gold and diamond, precious stones and these businesses, a lot of traders. COVID came a very unfortunate incident many people lost lives unfortunately but i would say it was the best incident for dubai real estate market and i was saying this since the beginning number one why, why do you think I'm saying that COVID was the best event for Dubai real estate market? You know, now we see there are many reasons to it, but by the time that it started it... By the time it started, scary. I think I have videos on Instagram also. Yeah, by the same time also, in the mid-2019, right after the lockdown, I was saying that COVID was the best incident for the wider real estate market. My reason at that time was number one, the prices will go down anyways. Thanks to COVID, we had someone to blame. Honestly, number one. Secondly, prices will go down anyways, and nobody knew till where, till when are the prices declining. Thanks to COVID, they went down faster and they reached to the bottom faster earlier. So by the end of uh, 2019, beginning of 20, what are we now? 2022, 2021. By the end of 22, by the end of in September, September, October 22, we reached to a point where the selling price of properties was actually less than the cost of construction. Am I right? You were buying properties, offices in JLT for two, in, in, in Mazaya Business Avenue, there were offices sold for 250 dirhams per square foot. 250 dirhams per square foot. Garden uh, home villas in Palm Jumeirah went to 6 million. Less than that. Less than 6 million. District 1, 4 bedroom went down to 6.8 million. Today find one less for less than 13 million. I sold a five bedroom in district one for 7.5 million. Market price was nine, but the guy had no buyer. So I sold a five bedroom for 7.5 million. Now, 20 million. now nothing less than 16, 17 million. So the prices went below the cost of construction. So they reached to the bottom faster. Sidra Villas in Dubai Hills went down to 2.6 million. Today there is nothing for less than 4.3, 4.4. Maple in Dubai Hills reached to, and that time they were brand new, they reached to 1.6. And I heard there was a deal at 1.55, I don't know. 1.6 million in, in, in Maple for a three bedroom with 2,200 square feet built up area. Today find one for less than 2.5, 2.6 million. There is nothing. In a matter of one year, right? So, the prices here by the end of 2020, which was, I think the dip is mm, October or November, if I'm not mistaken, 2020, prices reached to the bottom. Because of COVID, we had someone to blame. Prices reached to the dip faster. 
They listed below the cost of construction. Besides, in this country, COVID helped us to show to the world what Dubai is capable of. Because nobody, no other country managed and handled COVID the way Dubai government did, the way UAE government did. Sanitizing everywhere, sanitizing the roads, the lockdown was two or three weeks. Everyone got vaccinated while, while, while in other countries they were still talking about which vaccine to choose, right? So everyone got vaccinated. We were one of the first countries to vaccinate the majority of, of, of the population. Things went back to normal, restaurants, public areas, public facilities went back to full capacity and came to normal. So this challenge was actually converted to a good opportunity, right? So it became a very good opportunity to let the world know how safe and sound Dubai is. It's enough for today. See you tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum.